click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about the two types of real-time CPU scheduling that is a soft real-time system and a hard real-time system. And the main issue concerning this real-time scheduling is the minimizing latency. There are two latency we will discuss about. One is the interrupt latency and another is a dispatcher latency. In general, there are two types of real-time CPU scheduling. One is soft real-time system. In soft real-time system, there is no guarantee that how a critical process and when it should be scheduled. It only guarantees that a critical process will give priority over a non-critical process. But the hard real-time CPU scheduling system provides us some stricter restrictions that a process should be serviced within the specified period of the deadline. If it is specified and serviced after the deadline exits, then it is same as that it has not serviced at all. Now there are several issues concerning this real-time CPU scheduling. We will discuss today about minimizing latency. Consider the event-driven nature of a real-time system that the real-time operating system is waiting for some real-time event to occur. This event can be of two types. One is software, like if the timer is expiring, or in hardware, when an automobile is approaching obstruction and it is notifying the operating system. Now, when the event has occurred, it is very important to service it as quickly as possible. Now the elapsing time between the occurrence of event and the service routine to responding it is known as the event latency. Now there are different types of event latency with different types of latency requirements. Suppose for example in an anti-lock braking system the latency can be 3 to 5 milliseconds. If someone wants to slide the wheel and it is started sliding then the programmer or the operating system has only 3 to 5 milliseconds to control the situation. Any situation control after this longer time will be varying out of control of that automobile. But when we are considering an embedded system that is controlling a radar in an airline can be considered of a latency of more than one second. In this way, even latency can be varied from operating system to another operating system. Now there are mainly two types of even latency possible. First one is the interrupt latency and the second one is the dispatcher latency. Now we see that when and how an interrupt latency occurs. The interrupt latency is the time between when the interrupt occurs and when it starts the service routine to service that interrupt. The total time is known as the interrupt latency. Now the interrupt latency time can be divided in parts. What are the parts we will see now? First the CPU is performing some task. Now here the interrupt is occurring. Now the CPU should complete the instruction which it is running and after that it should determine that what are the types of the interrupt. After determining the type of the interrupt, the CPU should save the state of the current process and then context switch it before starting the interrupt service routine which will service the interrupt. After it saved the current state of the process, now it will start the service routine to service the interrupt particularly.
Now any time between the interrupt occurrence and the service routine starting is known as the interrupt latency. So now we will see in the diagram that what are the areas which can be included in the interrupt latency. So here we can see that the total time is known as the interrupt latency. Now it is very crucial to control and minimize this interrupt latency in a real-time operating system as the real-time processes should need to attend immediately after they occur. Now in some hard real-time CPU scheduling system, the system need to be done it not only minimizing the latency, but also the latency should be serviced in a specified persistent requirement. Now this interrupt latency has one more issue while we are concerning that the interrupt disablement of the kernel updating the data structure. While kernel is updating the data structure, we know that the interrupt is disabled for some time. Now in the hard real-time CPU scheduling system, this kernel disable of the interrupt portion should be a very small amount of time. The next we will discuss about the dispatch latency. Once the interrupt latency is serviced, the time taken by the scheduler dispatcher to stop one process and to start another process is known as the dispatch latency. As we have described earlier that in real-time system, the real-time critical processor should be accessed and allocated CPU immediately. That is why minimizing this type of latency is also important as well as the interrupt latency. Now we will see in the diagram that how dispatch latency can be make up inside an operating system. So the time between the event occurrence and the response of the event, we know that the time is known as event latency. Now in the event latency, the first portion we have already solved with the interrupt latency. So the when interrupt is occurring and the ISR that is the interrupt service routine is servicing that interrupt. Now the after interrupt has service, the process is available to run. Now from the time of the process available to run and it is allocated a CPU is the actual dispatch latency. Now this dispatch latency has two phases. Now the conflict phase is occurring with two functions. First, the preemption of any process that is running in the kernel by a high priority process. And the second one is releasing the resources by the low priority process that are needed by some high priority process. Now in this way, after finishing with the conflicts phase, the actual dispatching is done by the dispatcher. And after the dispatcher has finished and allocated CPU is done with the process, the actual real-time scheduling is done. Now the most effective technique for getting a minimized dispatch latency as well as interrupt latency is to use the preemptive kernel for any operating system. Now to minimize this dispatch latency and interrupt latency, we see there the several ways. 
and with this disabling of this dispatching latency, there are many variations of the waiting period. For example, Solaris has disabling the dispatch latency and the waiting time become 100 millisecond, where when it is enabling this dispatch latency, the waiting time becomes only less than a millisecond. In this way, minimizing latency can help in the real-time CPU scheduling. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.